Hello and welcome to State of the Economy. Uh, today we have with us uh, Mr. Dilip Chinoy, CEO of the National Skill Development Corporation, to uh, discuss uh, with us in some detail the, the, the new National uh, Skills Mission, uh, which was uh, launched by uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi last month. Uh, now a lot of new elements have been added to the, the skill development mission, uh, which had uh, uh, kicked off uh, uh, when this government came to power last year. Uh, uh, well, it was even from before that, uh, uh, the skill development mission was uh, an ongoing project, but uh, a lot of new elements have got added. And to discuss uh, that, we, we have with us uh, uh, Mr. Dilip Chinoy. Uh, welcome to our uh, show, Mr. Chinoy. So now, now tell us, uh, uh, last month, uh, Prime Minister Modi added a lot of new elements to the overall skills mission. And, uh, and you as CEO of the National Skills Development Corporation, uh, it's a public-private uh, 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 mission project, and you work closely with the government. Now, uh, what are these new elements that have got, got added to the uh, to the whole scheme now? You know, I think the to put it in the context, okay. July fifteenth, uh, okay. like uh, June twenty-first, was nominated as the World Yoga Day. July fifteenth okay. is the World Youth Skills Day, okay. and it was the first uh, World Youth Skills Day. Okay. On that, we Prime Minister unveiled four different things. The first was that, like the uh, may, uh, you know Make in India or the Ganga yeah. Yeah. Swach, uh, the G Clean Ganga or the Swachh Bharat uh, mm -hmm. program, mm -hmm. the Skill India is now officially a mission. Okay, this was actually announced by the, the finance minister in his first budget. Mr. Jaitley had said the government okay. intends mm -hmm. to set up a Skill so India. So you're mission. saying it has been raised to uh, the level of a mission? Yeah, it's been raised to level mission, and moreover, mm -hmm. it is perhaps uh, as the as minister yeah, like Rudy, you have the Digital India mission. Yeah, as as yeah. Minister Rudy says that mm -hmm. uh, this is perhaps the only mission where the Prime Minister personally chairs it. Okay. So he's the chairman of the mission as well. And there's a mission uh, thing which is ordered all the ministers. Okay. Under that, there's another tier where the minister Rudy, as a minister of uh, skill mm -hmm. development entrepreneurship, chairs a committee mm -hmm. of secretaries. And then the secretary, Mr. Arora, chairs mm -hmm. the executive committee of which NSDC is a part of. Okay. Now, there's a three-tier structure being put into place okay. with seven independent verticals okay. looking at different aspects. Okay. One of the changes in, in this whole scheme mm -hmm. uh, is... Uh, the second thing that he unveiled there mm. was the skills uh, skills and entrepreneurship policy of the government. Okay. The last policy for India was in 2009. Mm. The policy in, said that it will be reviewed after five years. We have the policy reviewed and now we have a new policy of skill development and entrepreneurship, okay. which as the name itself suggests has a huge content of entrepreneurship. So earlier it was about workers, yeah. skilling workers. Now... It is also about skilling entrepreneurs. Yes. Self-employed entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. Okay. Because if you look at the numbers that are coming out, depending on how you look mm -hmm. at it, mm -hmm. the target in the previous skills mission was 500 million. Okay. This year is about 400 uh, plus uh, million. Okay. So the numbers have actually moved. Mm -hmm. And also because there is a accumulation of, uh, of things happening under the ministry, mm -hmm. the independent targets for different ministries that were a part of the earlier uh, okay. policy have mm -hmm. no, are no longer actually... So now the place. target is killing 400 million people by 2022? 2022. 2022, yeah. Okay, and, and, and entrepreneur, uh, skilling entrepreneur is part of this? Is part of that. Okay. And there's a framework being set up uh, for the... Because it stands to reason because NSS uh, data shows that uh, a good portion, a good part of uh, the uh, those who are employed in India are actually self-employed. So in some ways, they're already... Uh, Self-employed entrepreneurs, right? Yes. So if you look yeah. at if you look at it, in uh, fact, it's about the figure. It's about fifty percent. Fifty percent of all incremental Absolutely. employment is not in organized uh, uh, manufacturing, but they are self-employed. Yes. Yeah. Actually, if you look at it, you know one of the other things that have part of this is that mm -hmm. the policy states that there will be a harmonization of the different ministries skill development plans that committee of secretaries had met okay. and the cabinet has approved the harmonization laws mm -hmm. uh, i mean harmonization uh, criteria, criteria for which from which will be come into execution from april 1 2016 mm -hmm. and there's a transition time for all the existing programs to move to that okay. and in that a very key element is mm -hmm. that entrepreneurship and self employment will also be counted as placement 
because yes, most sir. of the government schemes actually talked about uh, if you wanted to skill under let's say the mm -hmm. dindial upadhyay gramin uh, kushal yojana scheme yeah. or the yeah. national uh, urban livelihood mission etc mm -hmm. uh, the mandatory placement of 70% was necessary for you to get the yeah. full payment mm -hmm. that 70% was constituted as getting into a job which was with the organized sector with epf mm -hmm. and you know all sure. of that and that was actually not possible because as you said a majority of the people estimates vary from 90% upwards are in the informal sector are not in the formal sector not and out of them 50% to 60% mm -hmm. are in the self employment sector yeah. so in the harmonization and common norms as it is called mm -hmm. uh, self employment and entrepreneurship was actually is actually included and the evidence for promoting uh, uh, for proving entrepreneurship is that person should have taken a loan from a bank okay. or from a nbfc mm -hmm. to set up an entrepreneurial model or should have an increase in income etc okay. so the whole thing of entrepreneurship has mm -hmm. been included in the uh, new uh, okay. policy document as we Tell before. me think about it. just explain to me uh, uh, it's interesting that the prime minister himself is chairing this mission and under him uh, i presume uh, all the ministries uh, the bureaucracies will coordinate right to to also uh, to in some ways to bring together uh, aspects of different ministries which uh, which require skill uh, development right yeah. now now tell me isn't the government today the biggest f uh, in some ways biggest uh, employer directly and indirectly like you have a government company like national building construction corporation you have uh, you know state government uh, driven companies who provide indirect employment in the sense they give out contracts for which construction workers are hired by contractors now is there some mechanism by uh, by which government can track these indirect employment uh, avenues which open up because of its contracts and then move to actually yeah. to to skill them and to uh, get them better welfare etc right yeah. so if you look at it uh, in the new uh, skill policy and the new skill mission document mm. uh, the role of the national skill development agency mm. is actually been very very specified to create a labor market information system okay mm. which tracks both demand and supply side mm. uh, in the sense what are the jobs available you know what is the training being done okay. and the, the, you have to track that that's, figure that's out a, that's a, that's IT kind of demand yeah, yeah. that's the it system being mm. developed mm. in 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 theory uh, you know a lot of people could say why can't you do it overnight but mm. in practice giving the nature of employment and giving the the mm. aspects here is slightly different mm. but very interestingly earlier when we when we mandated the national skills qualification framework mm -hmm. uh, there there's a very interesting clause in that framework which says that from 5 years after the nsqf comes into operation mm -hmm. all jobs have to be advertised according to a skills qualification level okay. so that means a, a mason a plumber a electrician will be having a, a a kind of a qualification pack which has been delivered by a sector skill council mm -hmm. in the skills qualification framework and then all will have to advertise the jobs according to that what is also being contemplated is like there is a there is a clause in the pwd contracting system and the government contracting system mm -hmm. that a certain percentage need to be certified mm -hmm. now it is a chicken and egg situation that there are no certified people so how can you do that but going forward as this uh, nsqf comes into operation and we have more trained people coming in mm -hmm. you will see this happening and what the the way it could be driven is anybody who gets a government contract mm -hmm. has to have certified people okay. of course there's a flip side what is the full nsq of full form the national skills for the audience national yeah. skills qualification framework as a national this, skills qualification framework yeah. okay. so this was actually yeah. when the minister actually addresses mm -hmm. he says there are three terms that everybody needs to know mm -hmm. the first is the national skills qualification framework mm -hmm. the framework that we knew was class 9 10 11 12 you know graduate post graduate sure. and mm. a degree mm. but there's a unskilled workers you know there is a, mm. a skilled worker then there's a supervisor senior supervisor general yeah. manager senior sure. general manager you know and mm. a, and a ceo yeah. so that has actually been done there mm -hmm. and in the 38 sector skill councils that we have we have a mapping okay mm. of the job roles mm. uh, and the qualification packs in that sector okay now the challenge is that traditionally a lot of people believe that if you take construction a lot of people work in the unorganized sector yeah. but whether it is the organized or unorganized sector the, what the mason does is the same thing yeah 
the, again, the second confusion that has been caused is that in the, in the MSME sector, a person performs multiple job roles. Yeah. Now, it is not that he performs half of a job role. He performs the full job role. Okay. So he'll have multiple certifications to enable him to actually progress there. Okay. And this is something with which the, the employers and, 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 and the people from industry or leading the sector skill councils oh. need to work with the agencies that are there to convince them that this is correct. Okay. So that is a challenge that we are facing. Tell me, Dilip, when you say, uh, when the NSS data says that... Uh, less than 3% of our workforce, which is roughly 450 million people, is skilled. What does it mean? Okay, there are two views uh, on this. I mean, are you saying that <laughs> barring those 2 3%, no, no. others are useless? No, <laughs> no. Pure, pure theory economists contest this view. Oh. The view is that the NSSO data asks the question, have you got a formal training? Okay. That means, have you got an NCVT certification? Okay. Okay. Now, when you're a graduate, right, oh. you, you have a graduation degree. Right, but there are many people outside the system who have a knowledge more than the what a graduate has. Yeah. Right, but there's no way for them to actually get so that they, graduate they, degree. They get categorized as unskilled. They get categorized as unskilled, mm. or you know, they don't have a certification, etc. Mm. So a farmer who does not have a formal certification gets unskilled. Mm. Now the problem is that you know, in 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 the in the construction industry, for example, the person may be skilled as a mason, but the contractor or the developer has got no means to know because he doesn't have a certificate. Oh, he doesn't you know, if you, have a, if, you, if you get a plumber from the hardware store for yeah. your home, you have no means to verify. So, so that's like plum, family of plumbers, they may be learning it from family to, to family kind of training yeah. system, right? And so, the certification yeah. makes a great difference in your income okay, because so. it proves to the employer that you have some skill and you need not be hired at basic wage. Yeah. And once you, see, if we... The idea is how do you get people to enroll for skill development programs? Okay. Yeah. Today, any job, you have a graduate, you get into the interview door. Yeah. But if you are skilled, how do you get into the interview so door? So you have to create a new threshold for the unskilled. That's, That's what you're saying, right? That's right. Yeah. We will uh, discuss it, uh, uh, but after a small break, uh, please don't go and keep uh, watching RSTV. Welcome back to State of the Economy. We are talking to Mr. Dilip Chinoy, CEO of... Uh, National Skills Development Corporation. Dilip, you were s saying something interesting. You were saying that just as uh, we have uh, various hierarchy of qualifications for those who are skilled or ed so-called yeah, educated, education, yeah. right, like 12th class, graduate, postgraduate, PhD. So, you, so, uh, so your corporation is working with the government, public sector organizations to also to, 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 to create a similar hierarchy of certifications for unskilled workers. As you said, a mason who, who has learned masonry through his family tradition uh, would be very good, uh, but on paper he, he's unskilled. So, right. so ba essentially what you'll do is you'll test him and you'll actually give him a certificate, right? Yes. So that and, is and, the, and that'll enhance his uh, yeah. mar market value also. That's the, f hmm. the, the next element that the Prime Minister launched on the 15th of July. He launched the Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana, mm -hmm. which is being uh, coordinated, implementation is coordinated by the NSDC, mm -hmm. under which we, there are two plans. One is to do 1.4 million or 14 lakh new certifications in the 28 sectors where there are standards. Okay. The second is to look at 1 million or 10 lakh recognition mm -hmm. of prior learning in sectors such as construction, handloom, plumbing, mm -hmm. you know, automotive. Today, your roadside automotive person does not have uh, any, anything. He just, you know, he's got no degree, no, no, no certificate or nothing. Mm -hmm. So if he comes like uh, a certified uh, mechanic, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And the, the idea here is that we want to create a market for mm -hmm. skilled people, you know? And if we create a market for skilled people, so every plumber, if he's registered, Today you are seeing in different parts of the country, plumbers were registered uh, being offered on an app, yeah, right? Okay, yeah. uh, or you have got through just dial. So mm. how do we actually create a market for people and create an incentive that mm. people go and get certified mm -hmm. and also then keep up with the latest trends, mm. etc. Mm. So this idea of recognition of prior learning is mm. exactly that. Across different industry sectors, you take any industry mm. sector, you take a person working on the shop floor uh, for on a lathe machine for five to six years. Mm -hmm. He may have passed out ITI for the last five years, mm -hmm. five years ago, but his qualification will be ITI. Okay. But 
he can actually do and it is happening in companies as we speak mm -hmm. that along with the practical experience they're taking a theory class in the weekend mm -hmm. and then giving him a diploma advanced diploma or mm -hmm. even a btech uh, as we mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, uh, as we go and institutions like there's yit in pune there are mm -hmm. other institutions who are doing earn while okay. you learn scheme so how is ns uh, national skills development corporation uh, helping this in this process so what we have done is we have formed 38 uh, sector skill councils in different okay. sector skill councils as a first step in the organized sector 80% of the entry level jobs have okay. been mapped and a qualification okay. pack and each of the sector skill councils so if it is the construction sector skill council is chaired by ajit gulabchand of hindustan construction okay. so they are saying what is a how do you progress from a mason to a contractor okay. uh, to a owner Uh, if you look at the capital good sector skill council is chaired mm. by mr k venkat ramnan of uh, that's where entrepreneurship will come in right yeah so, so if a, even, a, a even, mason becoming a contractor yeah so, so we have training providers in pune and other places whose mm. people have become started from a mason mm. we have a first woman entrepreneur also there do you also provide financing for yeah. from uh, mudra bank etc no or? no so mm. what we are doing is that uh, for the entrepreneurship piece mm. with our collaboration with seva or, or madura microfinance okay. or sri sayog microfinance mm -hmm. they are saying we are creating entrepreneurs so mm. one of the things we say the proof that you are creating entrepreneur should come out mm -hmm. by them taking a loan from you and setting up a business okay so then the training cost gets included in the loan cost and and seva is also giving carpenters a carpentry kit okay. mandeshi foundation which is working with hsbc in satara mm. area is also doing that slowly mm. slowly this thing is all spreading okay. and a huge number of entrepreneurs are and do you see the a role uh, a critical role played by mudra bank in funding these entrepreneurs uh, I think they isn't Mudra Bank meant to do that let, let me explain to you I think that is there the, you know in a, in a world bank uh, study mm. I think uh, you know it came out that India as a country for its size of GDP mm. has less number of entrepreneurs even than some african countries and there were three constraints uh, identified uh, for it the first was the two uh, complicated regulatory process to set up a business which the make in india is actually addressing The second one was that uh, there was no access to finance. So Mudra, the NBFCs, the ten yeah. thousand crore rupee fund that you have talked about, yeah. the indirect funding through organizations such as NSDC is an able is an enablement. The self help groups under okay. the Ministry of Rural Development yeah. are all are, are all elements to actually address the funding. Funding part. Yeah. And third is that you know we we don't tend to have an entrepreneurship culture. Okay. Uh, and i think that is changing mm -hmm. uh, and you know we have the like it happened initially in the initial dot com boom before it went bust yeah. but now with the e commerce startups and you know mm -hmm. even jaipur being nominated as a startup mm -hmm. hub you're seeing the younger generation mm -hmm. looking at entrepreneurship going in and risk taking ability there and the okay. and the societal attitude to failure also has changed Yeah. So it is a it is a whole system that is actually being developed here, which will promote entrepreneurship. Now here I want to uh, touch upon another very interesting aspect of uh, skill development. See, the bulk of the self-employed uh, in our country uh, would uh, logically uh, come from the non-upper caste uh, segments. I, I mean, I'm just making a. Uh, I'm, I'm instinctively I'm, I I I sense this because. even when the mudra bank was announced they did say that that this is supposed to uh, fund uh, self employed entrepreneurs who would largely be from you know uh, from the dalit and you know backward segments and this was said in the in the, in the budget uh, 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 announcement now uh, how do you think the uh, that these uh, segments uh, uh, the the socially uh, either to socially uh, oppressed sections you might say but now not anymore now they they are coming up uh, setting up their own small businesses uh, which, which is also which uh, which is borne out in several surveys that uh, that these uh, people are do uh, doing their own small you know rendering their services at the village level at the town level Now, how can finance reach these people? You know, that, that's I, what I'm asking. It's yeah. a very interesting yeah. thing. So I, I'm, I'm not sort of trying to yeah, bring I, in a caste angle no, here. No, no, I, I'm but, fully, but, I'm but, fully, but fully aware. But caste and class have an overlap here. I right? fully so. agree with you. Mm -hmm. well, you know, mm -hmm. some of the not known facts to a lot of people is mm -hmm. 
And there are two aspects to this question, so let me deal with it there. Uh, if we can get to the 400 million, mm -hmm. right, then given the number of households... The composition of the, yeah, yeah, number of households in the country, we have to do at least 1.2 people per household. So if we, we look at that, inclusion automatically happens. But that's not the question that you're asking. But the mm -hmm. second thing is, if you look at the different segments, so there's a minorities uh, finance uh, yeah. group, there's a minorities skilling group, a minorities in you know entrepreneurship group. It's yeah. known as Manas, right? Manas, yeah, sure. The second is for for the for the scheduled tribe and scheduled caste, they're two separate finance corporations. Mm -hmm. For the women, there's a Rajkia Mahila Kosh, which yeah. is actually operated under the Ministry of. Uh, sure. yeah. So there are different, for different types of people, there are different financing mechanisms which are to reach out to them. Are they but, working? You know, what has happened over the last four to five years, uh -huh. because of the initiative taken by the leadership in the in industry and partly because of the pull effect from the NSDC, mm -hmm. skill has come to center stage and now has come to a further center stage yeah. of the leadership of the prime minister and the yeah, minister. Sure. And entrepreneurship also is actually coming up because the people are now seeing mm -hmm. that if I improve my skills, mm -hmm. I actually, at the end of the day, get more money for my eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. And it, the equation with children now, with the youth today, mm. is if I work for eight hours, how much will I earn? So if I work for eight hours and I, as a, as a office, front office staff and I got 9,000 rupees is one thing. But if I work eight hours in the construction and I get 20,000 rupees, mm -hmm. people now are preferring to go to the construction sector. sector yeah. So mm -hmm. we are having, if you see a lot of the people working in the construction sector, you talk to them and say, I'm a graduate, but mm -hmm. I'm a mason. Mm -hmm. I did not go there. You know, I mean, there are cases where drivers have given up their sales jobs to become drivers because a driver pays more. Mm -hmm. So that the people are understanding the value mm -hmm. of, of, of skills and understanding the value of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. If, for example, rather than being a courier person today, mm -hmm. people are enrolling for a training program yeah. which enables them to buy their own vehicle after three years and then mm -hmm. become their own uh, okay. delivery person. Mm -hmm. So you're ha seeing this happening. It's very, very small now, but it's got mm -hmm. the opportunity to exponentially grow. Plus, tell me, how, how can your organization say, with the help of Mudra Bank, actually reach both skills and uh, entrepreneurial skills uh, and financing to the very backward uh, districts of this country where uh, the really poor and the uh, and, and people from the, you know, the, the Dalit so, backward, so let me, back, let, backward let, caste let, let, me, let me explain to you. Yeah. If you look at the profile of the type of people who have come out of the ecosystem of NSDC, mm -hmm. we've done about 5.4 million people over the last five years. You've, you've skilled about 5.4 million. Okay. Okay. Out of that, 51% are SC, ST, OBC. 27% are women. Without any formal reservation system in it. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. so you yeah. naturally, you're covering yeah. and people I, of a certain... Yeah, and you are into 471 districts of the country, including in a place like Par uh, Parleka Mundi, which is the so, heart so of... So, this Nakhsa. is a composition, right? Out of yeah. 5 million, 5 nearly 70% are uh, no, Dalits, no. backwards no, and women. 51%. Okay, 50. And there's some overlap in the, I mean, I'm not oh, women, women, okay, yeah, okay, okay. women and, 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 and the SCST, okay. OBC Backwards, numbers, yeah, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So, but what I'm saying is like a place, Lakshan Hit, Parle So do you think this trend will hold? It has to because that's yeah. a, if that is the nature of the demographics of the country and if you're wanting to do 400 million by that point of so, time. So natural demographics will dictate that this will be the composition. Yes. So and in a way, it's a good thing. So, yeah, we have to focus on the right things. While there are individual organizations who are given uh, the responsibility, like I mentioned, the finance corporations and the other things that have been set up, sure. there are, you know, it's very difficult sometimes. If a person doesn't have a BPL certificate, if a person doesn't have an uh, SCST uh, certificate, mm -hmm. then where does he go? So okay. then he can get included in a program such as this. The government okay. has its schemes there, are, you know, in a different ministries for doing that and they're all being coordinated in the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So this is the new uh, direction which we are looking at. Tell me, at. Dilip, how do you uh, foresee this lot that you just spoke about, 50% uh, that you have done, NS uh, National Skills Development Corporation has done uh, skilled and maybe placed about 22.3 million so far? Uh, yeah, if you look that's at that's what I see in the on your yeah, website. Yeah, yeah right. that's right. Now, now, how do you see uh, this lot, the bottom four hundred million people, uh, going forward in the next ten years? Do you do you foresee them being self-employed entrepreneurs more, or do you foresee them take going into jobs? 
I think if you look at the demographics and look yeah. at job creation and what is happening in the world, there is something very interesting happening across the world which have a major impact here mm -hmm. with the internet of things, with the dig digitization, yeah. with the virtualization. Sure. Mm -hmm. The nature of jobs are going to change. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. just something which everybody can understand. Mm -hmm. Uh, three years ago, we had a telegraph operator. Mm -hmm. Today, we don't have any telegraph operator other than the person who does something on the ship. Mm -hmm. thing, whatever so, you're it saying it will be more entrepreneurial. Uh, the, the jobs will change. More entrepreneurs will come up. Come we up. Did, you know, I, it's amazing. Okay. If you go back into history, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. we didn't have, we had very few mobile uh, sure. repair. Uh, uh, so now you have millions mm -hmm. of so mobile. So, you the labor market structure is changing. Labor market structure okay. is That's changing. Very, uh, it's changing. The yeah. entrepreneurial opportunities in India okay. are increasing. Yeah. Yeah. You just look at the... So, it's likely that the bottom 400 million people will go more into uh, entrepreneurial activities rather than... Regular jobs, uh, regular job possibilities or, there. Yeah, right? but but as the prime minister said, while the world ages, for you know for healthcare workers, general mm -hmm. duty assistants, sure. for mm -hmm. technicians, the world will open up to India. Okay. So it's important, like NSDC, what we are doing is are tying up with the different regulatory agencies and sector sure. skill councils yeah. across the world to get an equivalence of standards. So that's the other big opportunity for India. Thank you very much, Dilip Chunai, for talking to us. Sir. That's all we have in this edition of State of the Economy. We'll be back with you next week. Thanks for watching.